Hi everyone, it's Nave here and welcome to my art journaling channel. Today we're going to be continuing with our collage fundamentals and looking at the artwork of Nick Van Tock. Nick, Nick Van Tock is an English artist who now lives in Canada who is responsible for doing some amazing art and it's all based on male art basically and collage. So this is the most famous series of books, Griffin and Sabine, which is 25 years old this year. And it's a series of postcards between Griffin and Sabine, postcards and letters, um, capturing their mysterious connection. All the artwork that he does is a collage and his own hand illustrations. And he made it, it's a bit like a sort of pop-up interactive book for adults. Now the whole point about Griffin and Sabine is with the letters he um, sat at different desks. He had a desk for Sabine and a desk for Griffin and when he wrote their letters, which is all his own handwriting, it was all his own, um, he used different fonts, different pen styles, different grips and so on to do that to capture the two different personalities. His artwork is very, very um, travel, mail art, botanical based so that's what I tried to capture in the bits and pieces that I uh, um, collected with my stamps and my ephemera. I'm just going through really quickly so you can kind of see the bits and pieces I collected. So I've got fish, I've got architecture and this fabulous box which I learnt from um, my business partner Sue uh, with the mail art stamps done by collections which is a, a business in Australia I think I'm not sure if it's still running who did a whole series and they're actually based on his artwork and one of the made up countries he made, Capilan. So what I'm doing today is um, creating the postcards that are going to go into my final book um, to do with the lost correspondence of Griffin and Sabine. So I've cut down some cardboard to A6 size and I've got some old Thai stamps that again I've had on my stash for over 10 years and I've I loved them and I thought I need to use them on something special but I never used them so I thought this is the perfect opportunity to actually go in and to use stuff that I love and have it um, in my book that I can see and I can enjoy instead of having it in a basket thinking it's very special I can actually see it and enjoy it um, in something I'm looking at daily so I use some of those little mail art stamps to um, cancel the stamps, to make it look more realistic. And I'm using some cheddar um, Dina Wakeley um, acrylic paint to age and to colour the paint, uh, to the colour the, the stamps. Now those were, I'm not sure if they're real stamps or if they are um, made up ones that someone's put onto a collage sheet. but. They're, they're on a colour gloss and that what I did was you saw me tear them out individually and the reason I did that is so I could get a kind of perforated edge around it and when I went back in with the ink just to darken up those edges so you can see the torn edges. So now what I'm doing is again just stamping over the top. I had an airmail stamp and I didn't want the plane at the top so I just used a bit of washi to mask that off. Using the Japanese script or the Chinese script over on the other one, and his Nick Van Tock's artwork is very, very um, botanical. It's almost um, I'm trying to think of the word. I can't think of it. Can't even think of the artist. Don't worry, I'll come back to it soon. <laughs> um, yes, so. Combining the sort of male, the travel, and the biological, so with the fish or the plants or the the um, birds and so on, to just get a really weird combination of things. So I had this trout stamp. I don't know why. I'm not a big fish person. I don't eat fish, but it obviously appealed to me, and it was just perfect for this project. So I'm glad I had it. And I stamped it out on some other cardboard and watercolored it. Now you saw before I cut out some pictures I had from a National Geographic with fish but the colours just didn't quite work. So I thought by having um, these ones stamped out and put on it would work much better. And the great thing about it is by using the, uh, I think it was Daniel Smith's Kynite Genuine which has got a real sparkle to it, kind of really gave it a fish scale. 
Now what I just did there was I trimmed out over it and I wanted to re-stamp over the top. Now you could certainly use a stamp platform to do that but because it was a wooden mounted block um, obviously I wasn't going to peel it off my block and I found if I just trim it out, fussy cut it to the size and place it over the top carefully you get a fairly good <clears throat> impression again. So this is a little dot stamp I found in my unmounted stash and I was just going back through to sort of try and put some perforations in. Basically what it is is just building up an interesting background <clears throat> on what you're doing and com combining your stamps and your collage together. So for this um, piece of mail art what I'm doing is focusing on the sort of bird life the botanical um, nature of some of his artwork. So I've just torn out the rest of that fish at the top and it was a piece of bark from below just to um, get some texture. The glossy magazines work really well and they take ink really well but I would suggest if you're doing ink on them to use the sort of archi archival inks because they dry really quickly and they're not going to smear. So the piece of vintage text that you see me use is um, when I was in Ireland I went to an estate sale and got this packet of papers which include a will and a valuation and so on from 1806 um, and again I bought those in 2003 and they've sat in my um, stash this long because I just couldn't take myself to tear them up. It's got the most beautiful handwriting in it and you know while I bought it to do collage with I've never broken into it so this project was a real opportunity for me just to go no I'm, I'm going to use the stuff that I've been collecting for so long and put it into my journal. So I'm using the Distress inks in tea bag and walnut ink and I think that's hickory smoke there just to age up the papers a little bit more now I know they're already aged and aged naturally um, but just to bring a little bit of extra colour into them the little stamps that I've got there again are from the mail art um, selection I've got you can get mail art stamps from a lot of different businesses I noticed recently that Seth Apter has got a mail art um, set of stamps with you know cancellation stamps and so on on them basically you can just use any little stamps that you've got the great thing about cancellation stamps in particular are they're usually really badly stamped so if you've got something kind of circular and liney with a little bit of text in it you can probably get away with it and I was actually thinking something like um, teacher stamps they always stamp badly so um, one of those, might, you might be able to use one of those um, to do your, your stamping um, and do it in different colour. The bird that you can see on that piece that I've just done is an, a, a scrapbooking ephemera piece from Kaisercraft. Uh, just again, it kind of fitted, I, I don't know why. The bugs that I've got stamped across the page too, that's another theme that Nick Bonantok uses a lot in his artwork is sort of um, etymology, so butterflies and, and beetles um, sort of wandering across the page in a random fashion. And the really good thing about that is you sort of get this line for your eye to follow. So this piece I've used some old book um, paper that I've got. This is an, an old German book, again sort of from the early 1900s. And I'm just using some Sedona Red um, paint from Dina Wakeley to age up my page. It's my use it up journal so any paint I've got left over I paint into that. And the piece of paper that you can see there is a gel print piece that I had with some metallic paints on it. So I've just gone over with some night paint as well and you'll notice I'm making my acrylic paints very very fluid so they're almost translucent and it's just to build up the the glazed look. And now I'm going in with some of the um, architectural type stamps and going around the edge with a black just to blend it in so it looks like you're sort of going down a tunnel. So the stamps I've got there are just an old collection I've, I've got um, sort of 
about 15 years ago I used to be very into doing this style of artwork and um, you used to be able to buy packets of stamps from around the, the world Kmart used to sell them um, so I've, I've got a fair few stashed away and I'm just gluing them down again as more of a collage element and then going back and sort of stamping over the top now again this is a postcard I've had in my stash for ages very very curvy and it it's very reminiscent of an image that Nick Bantock would use in his artwork. This one reminded me of his book, um, The Venetian's Wife. He uses a lot of um, particularly sort of Indian statues and so on in his work. And there's another book that he's written called The Museum of Purgatory, which is a fabulous book that goes through um, lots of different pe people who have died, um, collections. Obviously, they're all fictional, um, but you know, one person's got a collection of spinning wooden spinning tops, and another person's got a collection of um, elephant statues. And he sort of collaged them and documented them and made them up. Uh, it's just the the sort of books you can sort of go into and just lose yourself. There's there's not too much to read in them. But the, the visuals, there's so much there to just go back and look at and look at. This book is a very treasured book that I've got. I don't know where I got it from, but again, it's from the early 1900s. I think 1890, 1900s. Um, and it's a book of handwritten poetry and love letters. And for a long time, I've never done anything with it because they are so precious and so beautiful. But I want to honour them in some way instead of just being left somewhere. And they, where I got it from, I think was an old estate sale. It was going to be thrown out if it wasn't used. So I like to think that um, by being put into the artwork, they're getting a new lease of life and people are seeing them again. If they were stuck in the book, people wouldn't see them. So here are the finished pieces. You can see the cancellation on the stamps. The Capilan is... Um, directly from Nick Bantock. It's a fictional country that he's made up and that's from the collection stamps that um, I got from Collections Australia. You can find them on eBay, the whole set, for about $90. Now they're obviously a bit of a limited edition thing but you may find some kicking around somewhere. So these are the fish and you'll notice in the next video that I finish off the fish with some handmade um, postage stamps. So this is one video in three. My next video is going to be on how to make faux postage and faux seals and the final video is how I combine these postcards and the faux postage all together to make the booklet spread in my art journal. So please stay tuned and see parts two and three. I hope you've really enjoyed this and I do strongly encourage you if you're interested in this type of artwork please um, search out Nick Bantock to find his amazing art. Thanks for watching and see you next time.